we're rolling. So we little clap. Ready? Okay, share one, take one. But this brings up a very interesting story. You haven't asked me the question, where did snowboarding come from? And I will, I'll answer that question. December 25th, 1965. We had had a huge snowstorm on the pillars of uh, Lake Michigan. My wife, she came in the living room and said, Sherm, you gotta get these kids out of the house and uh, do something. Necessity is the mother of invention. I looked over and I saw my oldest daughter, Wendy's little 32-inch skis from Kmart. So I put these two little skis together and braced them. Well, I packed him up, we went outside, and it was all during this episode. I wish I could explain how these thoughts come, but I said, my gosh, we're surfing. We're surfing, and if you could get back up this hill, it's really a wave, and you could surf it all day long. My wife had dreamed up the contraction of the word snow and surf for snurfer. As it says in my patent, a downhill device where the rider travels perpendicular to the direction of travel. <laughs> and then the neighborhood kids came in, they wanted to play on it. They absolutely had a ball. What I really saw developing was a toy to replace the sled. As it progressed, Muskegon is the home of Brunswick Corporation, where they make bowling alleys, bowling pins, uh, bowling balls, and all. Uh, and I had two or three really good friends, engineers I worked with. And Brunswick wanted to get their hands on it before anybody else did. That's how the thing went to market. They were advertising this Smurfer as a winter skateboard. The skateboard culture was really booming and it was a counterculture. <laughs> It was 1968 when we got our first snurfer, so we were 10. <laughs> so that's kind of where it all started. I think this snurfing became quite popular. About that time, all our friends were getting snurfers as well, and uh, we just did a lot of backwoodsing. And then along came the contest. Snurfing is adaptable to all age groups for play or for sport. All these people in the national contest purchased their snurfers from retail stores in their hometown. Then they carried them home to practice on hills and slopes. And soon, they were ready for competition. Get on, get on! <laughs> the hill was a challenge. Very few people made it to the bottom. If you made it, you probably won. Yeah. <laughs> Owning your own snurfer means you are eligible to join the National Snurfing Association you receive a beautiful woven patch to wear on sweaters or jackets. Nobody really had any type of a surfboard for the snow until Sherman Poppins invented Snurfer. That was the start, and it went from snurfing contest to snow surfing contest to snowboarding. That changed the game. Very good. Finally, wasn't even in 1979, now this is 14 years after the patents were on, uh, Jake Burton Carpenter came to the contest and Jake brought snurfers, but he had uh, cut an inner tube and made a thing to slip your foot under and nailed it to the snurfer. So in effect, he had a little binding. Well, that was pretty important. A company called uh, Brunswick Corporation used to make something called a snurfer a long time ago, and I rode those for about the last 10 years. And Nobody really improved it, and living back east and just sort of getting flustered with that particular board, just decided to start making something on my own. Front foot goes in this binding right here, and then your back foot 
tucks underneath this back binding. Uh, it's a real good sport. I hope everybody gets into it because it's pretty safe. It's a lot of fun. There's a lot of speed and you can definitely surf the snow. More people ought to do it. I'll tell you, if anybody deserves credit for the whole industry other than my little board, it's Jake Burton Carpenter. He, he saw the future uh, that, that I didn't see. It's become a commodity now, but still, I think there's a lot of people riding who are riding because of that feeling and that emotion. Any rider today will tell you that a snowboard and powder is about one of the greatest experiences you could have. Well, it was the same on the sniffer. If you can get in deep snow and you know what you're doing, there's nothing like it. I mean, it's just fantastic. I rode alone a lot. There was something, well, I call it zen. You felt it when you made a good turn or when you got the right amount of air. It's still exciting and it's still romantic. When you're in